thank you so much it's 8 p.m and just 22 minutes past that and that is east african time but the day continues everywhere across the globe welcome my name is rita caballero i welcome you all to join us to make sure we explore to position yourself into the metaverse economy and do not forget to hit the subscription button make sure you do share this link because it's very important for you and to your neighbor and also at least hitting onto the notification bell to make sure you get reminded about the information that is ongoing here we appreciate already those who are commenting and thereafter we will be sharing your comments on a little bit later on to discuss a lot about metaverse and packaging it all i have got gentlemen with me here to uh from different capacities and with me just to begin from my extreme right is uh, honorable muhammad Nsereko, who is uh, also an mp uh, that is uh, kampala central thank you for joining us and uh, from uh, extremely my, uh, coming closer to my right is uh, Mo Mr. Mogeni Kilian, who is a co-director and also co-founder Nile One. But he is a very great blockchain advocate. And here with me on my left, there is Mr. Mulondo Daniel, who is a CEO and also founder of Nile One Group. But we're not alone here. Online, we are joined by I, uh, Mr. Ivavi Festo, who is a crypto mogul. Ladies and gentlemen, from wherever you're watching us from, and uh, gentlemen here, thank you for joining the set. Now let's kickstart our conversation to understand and help people here position themselves into the metaverse economy. Let's break the port uh, with the Mr. Mugeni here. What is the metaverse and what do we find there? Uh, thank you for having me today. Uh, it's a pleasure uh, being on a panel with uh, such great minds, uh, such innovative people and people that are trying to push uh, the digital, uh, uh, digital revolution and digital adoption in Africa. Uh, we don't speak only on behalf of Uganda, much as this is where we come from. We are looking at an African vision and to expand and change the narrative in Africa. We have a lot of job uh, uh, shortages, we have a lot of challenges in Africa, but we see that this technology, this can be solved. So back on the topic of the metaverse, uh, the metaverse in short is uh, a virtual reality space where uh, people can interact with computer generated environments and also interact with others. So in this world, think about uh, everything that exists physically can exist in this world, but with better uh, through programming, they can be improved in whatever way we would like it to be uh, programmed. So in that short explanation, I think you can understand that it is just a world, uh, a virtual world that basically can exist alongside where we are. And so many things can be done in there. Thank you so much for your submission. And online, like I said earlier, we have got Mr. Ivory Festo, who is a very crypto mogul, waiting to hear from us. I don't know if you can hear us right now, if we are communicating. Could you please say hello so that we can continue knowing you can greatly hear us? Okay, we're going to be joined by him later on, but let us now hear from uh, Honorable Sereko right now to share with us what you understand. Uh, for me, gentlemen, I do understand that this is a virtual world or universe that brings reality closer to me. You could have a different perspective, Honorable. <coughs> you, you, you're actually saying the, the, the very same thing, but I want us to assume that the person behind there doesn't know what they're talking about. Sure. Because for as long as we continue to use strong terminology, we know it. Mm. But sending it to a world that is not necessarily English in its mother tongue, mm. it's a huge wastage of time. Mm. One, if we want to teach the people the metaverse, we must be illustrative. Mm. As all teachers, I would have expected the VR glasses to be here, mm. so that you tell people what they can see. That's why when we were teaching a long time ago, you'd have cardboards and everything illustration so when they teach, tell you one they bring a stick to show you this is one two you even use your fingers one two three four five why 
so that the brain memorizes, but it also synchronizes what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. In simple terminology, mm -hmm. it is being in a place where you're physically not. For example, the beginning of what we would call the metaverse is what people are feeling today here that are watching us on YouTube. You're seated behind your sets, whether it's on your computer or on your screen or wherever you are, but you're having a feel of us. But now, with this Web3, they want to bring you closer. They want the magnet to bring you closer so that we all be in the same studio. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it is a migration from what was there long time ago when you would send a messenger to go and take a message, mm -hmm. move from here to go to Dar es Salaam and carry a post and deliver it. Mm -hmm. Now, with computerization and digitization, we have to go back to the past basic. Slowly, that's the only way people will appreciate what you're talking about. Okay. Because you'll be talking about the metaverse when someone doesn't even know what the computer is. Okay, right there. So, if we basically start with where we started from, mm. to where we've been, mm. where the world is, mm. and then we talk about the future of where the world is going, mm. you'll have more followers, you'll have more people appreciating, you'll have more people digitized, and probably the myth of what they don't understand, because you will sit here and say there is a digital asset. Okay. But what, is, about what is digital in telephone. itself? Let's cross to uh, Mr. Molonjo here. Uh, I'm seeing he's already holding an oculus in the hand. Start it from there, Mr. Molonjo. Yeah, thank you so much, Rit, uh, for this opportunity. Uh, welcome to the future. Mm. Uh, as, of, as my senior said, uh, the Honorable Seriko, uh, better to start with uh, uh, the background of this tech, how it has come, uh, where we are right now, and why are we advocating for it, being that uh, right now we are uh, um, on the infrastructure of it and how people are going to benefit. So, but coming back to the uh, question you've asked me, metaverse comes from two words. There is what the word meta and verse. So meta, something which is beyond the future. Then verse, it's the universe. So beyond the future, that's where the, the universe is right now, and that's where we are going. But of course, before uh, we come to uh, metaverse as the whole subject of today, the people who are viewing us uh, from all, all over the walks of life, or over Africa, there are people who are now watching us from uh, Amsterdam, that's what I've uh, realized, and uh, they have to understand how this tech has come through, mm -hmm. how digitization has taken place, and where, right now where we are. Okay. So, uh, so talk to us about what you're holding. Right now, this is a, an Oculus Quest. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a VR machine that you can use to enter into the future. Mm -hmm. And these are controllers. So, but in the future where we are going, it's gonna be, the tech is going to be uh, customized in a way that everyone can be able to access it, not as expensive as is, as is right now, uh, in a way that everyone can walk into the future. So, but right so now, again, that is where it comes to this, and I would like this to be interactive. Sorry. Please <laughs> take a career. I mean, the, the guy seated far away in the village, you're showing this. He's lucky to be on YouTube. Okay. And you're showing him this uh, equipment, the virtual reality glasses, uh, ocular, and then you say it's called them VR. Virtual reality. For as long as we do not start from the basics, Yes. And which we should do today mm -hmm. of digitization, yes. we might end this program when we are 65. Okay. And that would mean the program would only benefit those that understand it, minus including those that ought to join the club, inclusivity. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the very first spot should start by, I'll give you, I'll, I, I can take a reading. Please. Okay, please. When the world was going through phases of development, mm. 
human nature evolved on how to make life easy and simple. The only way to make life easy and simple started in computing, mathematics. Because how did we start to become digitized? Because you're talking about the digital world, the meta world. Mm. So an ordinary person seated in Ujiji, in Dodoma, in Nairobi, how would they know even the word digital? All right? It means that this is the world that works in real time. Okay. Digit, digitized. It comes from numerics of mathematics. The mathematicians tried to solve problems of the day. Long ago, there was trade with one another, and the issue was computing. Assuming I pose the question, 1 million times 20 million minus 1 plus 4, find the square root of 2 and give me the answer. I'm not finding any of that. Okay, you would pass it, but probably it would take you two weeks to compute it. Therefore, great men with great minds then sat down and thought, how do we make life easy? Invention of a calculator. Making life easy. Slowly they started, then gathering data. They looked at files, were very many. Then they gathered data and put it together and then stored it, hence formation of a computer. Mm -hmm. All this is from the birth of a computer. Then within the computer they sat and thought, okay, after inventing this computer, what else can it help us do? The following thing was communication, interaction. How does A interact with B? That is why Mr. Killian here has a gadget and I have a gadget. In this world, that means gadget A, controlled by an individual, will be communicating with gadget B, meaning the world then started getting space. Less human interaction began by human beings because you used to carry a physical file and take it from one person to another. Now, the world evolved where you would store files in folders and send this file from A to B. Mm -hmm. Meaning, you would now compute easily, you would store information easily, but you would now also pass on the information easily. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, for those of you who are there, wherever you are, South Korea, China, I want you to see this evolution, or even in the United States. Mm -hmm. How did we get to this point? The point started way back from our forefathers. But in order to achieve all this in computerization, there was one magic thing that would not miss out. It would be power, energy, electricity. Without the world of power, there is nothing you can achieve. Okay. And hence we came to the world of power. Mm -hmm. Now, slowly we evolved from the following. One, after the big computer, which you remember where you had the systems unit, yeah. the monitor, and the keyboard, others invented and said, can you move with all these three objects? Mm -hmm. Then they made what we call the portable computer, which is the laptop that we are carrying, condensed everything into one. Honorable, we have uh, one minute to Okay. Briefly. As technology evolved, mm -hmm. we came to what you're holding there, mm -hmm. the smart computer, which was now a communication gadget, four in one actually. It computes, it stores data, it does communication, and it's also your personal now secretary because you have Siri. You say, Siri, remind me of this. It, it, it can be used as a stool for movement. You remember, we had the TomTom -tom in GPS. Yeah. Where you would put in the GPS, it would be different. But now, you put it exactly there. Now, infrastructure was built through communication the internet. The internet to further movement of voice, data, all right, oh, sorry, of voice, uh, of videos, and writings, information, mm -hmm. through the internet. That is where we are, ladies and gentlemen. With the invention of the internet, therefore, this is how you can have this function. The internet of things. Okay. Now, when he talks about the Web3, okay. I'm going this to is where uh, we are. Inter interact uh, you there, Mr. Nsirogo. Thank you so much for at least we have got some coverage about, you know, evolution around internet, power, electricity, and package internet of things here. Let's have uh, Mr. Kilian here, Mr. Mugeni, yeah, to wanted, submit on... I wanted to address uh, some of the concerns Mr. Nsirogo has raised mm -hmm. regarding these gadgets. Now, 
uh, currently what's happening is we, we've been on Web 3, or sorry, Web 2, and that's where the internet has been built. Now we have what we call Web 3. So it's a new internet built based on blockchain, which is going to change the way things are handled, the way we interact with each other and with uh, different applications. Bringing this gadget on set, it's a demonstration of one of the first uh, gadgets that you'll be able to use in order to, for you to exist or to, f to have the feeling that you exist in the metaverse. Mm. Right now, when you want to chat, say, say, on Facebook, you will pull out your phone, open your Facebook page, and type. In the metaverse, it's the new internet, so the gadgets we use change. This is one of them. Mm. It is currently expensive. It's institutions like the ones here at Naya, one that can afford them. But through uh, adoption and growth of this technology, these are going to get cheaper. Apple, for example, has a smaller gadget like this, just like your eyeglasses that you'll be able to wear. So these things will get cheaper along the way. I remember back uh, a couple of years ago, my own parent was into uh, printing and publishing. So she was among the first people that bought a Macintosh computer. Mm. It was over $5,000, one computer. But right now, anybody can afford a computer, I could say. So yes. we give it time Tell as the technology people. is growing. Uh, we shall have gadgets available that will enable everyone in every level of the society to access this new way. Okay, thank yeah. you so much. Still on accessibility and affordability. Of course, everyone, uh, I think everyone, you inclusive watching right now, you could be there asking, is there a sale somewhere I can go get, you know, buy this? How, what is the range, cost? So how do I get in touch? Because everyone's mind right now is boiling from what uh, Honorable is just from telling us, you inclusive. Yeah. So everyone wants, I feel like you want to hold it right now. I mean, how can you calm people down? Yes, a uh, very nice uh, question. Nile One, as uh, an innovation center, as uh, a company that drives innovation and adoption of uh, innovative technology, we've been running a campaign for almost a month now. It was called the Metaverse Experience. It started out free of charge. People came here and had a good time, and they encouraged others to come. It now comes at a fee, because of course there are costs involved, but at a low cost you can come and experience gadgets like this. Eventually, people will know the value through experience. Like Honorable Seleko said, this is an experiential learning. I cannot tell you what the metaverse is unless you really come and have an experience of what can you do in it? What are the different applications you can place in here? So for the side of institutions, uh, it's through the development of such things, just the way people build computers. So you could develop such things. But for us as the end user, what you can do, because there are so many applications, it's free entry. It's just you signing up, for example, for a game. You sign up the way you sign up for any account, and you play. But through playing, now you earn. The tokens you earn in this game can be converted into real money, what you call real money. Okay, so you're now pay. taking us to some of the, you know, what really happens in, in there. Before we get there, mm. as I could you are, still you are miss asked some about the affordability. Yes, please. Yeah, and so that is where I'm still going. Could you add on to this? So does that mean that I can only get that technology, that experience using an Oculus? This is called an Oculus. Yes. Does that mean that all that in the metaverse is limited to this device? No, that is not true. No. Please. Uh, there are different applications built. For example, the Facebook, the way you view Facebook on your laptop is different from the way you view Facebook on your mobile phone. So there are applications you will need. If you want an immersive experience, you will need a gadget like this. However, that same application can be customized to be used by a mobile phone or a laptop. So there, is, there should be no worry that if I, don't have, I cannot afford an Oculus, I will not be able to interact with this. Because, for example, in the gaming sector, you just download your app, this is a blockchain-based app, mm -hmm. and you play a game, receive tokens, convert those tokens. Now you can build up an, a portfolio like that and be able to afford something like this. Okay. But you enter free of charge using a mobile phone and internet. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mugeni. Right now, let's cross to the CEO of Nylon Group, that is uh, Mr. Mulodo. I do understand you have uh, um, experienced people already coming here. You're connecting the community to the metaverse. How exactly are you moving forward, positioning yourself into this space? Yeah, uh, thank you so much. As Nile One, uh, we have really tried to uh, put people together first on the forefront to see that, hey, uh, the, the, ch the world is changing, is transforming, because change is a fact of life. 
you either uh, you change, are young. Change, we'll change you. Is yes, you are young. Yes. Right now you are. Eh? Change I'm old. I'm a mother. Your yes. mother. Your what? So that's how change. I mean, that's how human human system is wired, or oh, that's how God created us. Before internet was nothing, around by 1990, but a lot of people were like, no, this is a, something which is bubble. Mm -hmm. So right now, internet is a necessity of recent, that was last year here in Uganda. We went offline for about one week or two weeks, but we were in, in the middle of nowhere. That means that internet is part of us. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are inviting more people uh, through Nile One. We have created a platform whereby people come and one, they understand that this technology is here to stay. Number two, uh, we are here uh, to give them the skill and the experience because the cost of living is going to change when it comes to metaverse. Uh, it's going to be so easy uh, to go to university via metaverse. For example, if, you're, if, you're, if you want to go to Harvard right now, the cost of, of you going there, one, the, the entire village has to, to, say, eh? to fund, <laughs> to fund. Mm -hmm. <laughs> your, your stay at Harvard. Yeah. But it's going to be so easy with Metaverse in a way that even our, our, uh, our people in remote areas, as long as there is internet, uh, they can be able to access quality education okay. through Metaverse. Okay. So, and we are giving people an experience that, look, come and try to experience this. How can you access quality education mm -hmm. via Metaverse? Okay. That's one of the things that we are doing at Nile One. And uh, we have built partnerships. Mm -hmm. Right now, uh, Victoria University, which is here in Kampala, Uganda already, when you go there, you're going to find the, a course via Metaverse, but it's delivered through Nile One. Okay, that is uh, so great. Congratulations to us, Nile One. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now, let me get in touch with uh, uh, Festo Online. I do not know if you can hear us yet. Hello, are you there? Can you get to us? Uh, yes, yes, I am here. You can uh, call, you're coming through. Thank you so much for joining us. And I've come to learn about uh, your Twitter that you published actually. That was uh, April 15th, this particular year, when you, uh, you had read about Metaverse for about a month. And in your tweet, you're highlighting that how it works and how it is going to impact your life and business might be more profiting to you than any school days. I mean, where do you get that confidence and you know that inspiration behind that? Uh, yes, um, thank you, everyone. Thank you for thank you to the presenters. I have been uh, watching the show and everything is great. So where I get that confidence is that uh, technology is uh, disruptive and uh, metaverse is also disruptive, and uh, I believe uh, people are getting the real. Uh, the real concept of what metaverse is and uh, it's going to change the world it's going to move the internet further to where it is to uh, a, a more 3d world that we are going to be experiencing oh thank you so much and uh, from your understanding could you submit also how you undertake on how do you experience metaverse how do you look forward to transformation with it and how you understand it for the public for the world to hear from you please uh, the word metaverse uh, is uh, it means beyond and verse comes from the word universe mm. so what they are trying to do is actually they are building a completely parallel world from ours that we know <laughs> we have the physical world that we know uh, everything around you is physical you can touch it you can feel it but they're also building this uh, digital world where people are going to be able to live work and play online these are very important uh, uh, statements in this in this statement live work and play 
Uh, the concept is not really new because the gaming world has been using it, but uh, it's, it's going to extend to a point that people are going to be able to live onto the, the metaverse and also work onto the metaverse. And how, how are they going to be able to live onto the metaverse? They are going to be able to live onto the metaverse in their digital avatar states. There are projects like uh, like Akona and uh, Metaverse, sorry, Meta Hero, mm. that are responsible for scanning your bodies. Do stay with us and uh, what you are actually saying, I recently experienced that. I recently talked to the former president of the US, Obama, uh, taking me through the White House there. Let me cross to the people's representative amidst us here and that is uh, Honorable Nsedeko, the member of parliament for Kampala Central, to let us know how welcoming are you to this world of the metaverse? Uh -huh. Let me tell you, we don't even have to resent or welcome. Okay. We are in the world. Okay. The issue should be accessibility, mm. reliability, mm. inclusivity, and sustainability. Four issues. Okay. How is it accessible to everyone? Mm. Mm. Two, that is why I started with the infrastructure is there. Mm. Okay? That is the internet. Two, how is it easy for everyone to understand? We will talk like my brother first has spoken. Mm. But it, you would be like giving a pig a golden ring. It will just swallow it. Mm. So if, even if you show me these glasses and they are of no use to me, mm. I'll stick to my radical, uh, or what we would call the rudimentary style of life. Mm. Therefore, the onus lies on companies, leaders, and the community, like what you've done. This is the best initiative. Mm -hmm. But let us make it as simple as possible for the ordinary person to understand. For as long as we speak to ourselves, mm -hmm. we will end the show by talking to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I've always told people, I was attending a conference in London, in the UK, and they were so amazed by this. They were saying the only thing that is blocking the progress to technology and the misuse is that people don't actually know. I mean, you give me a phone, this phone can do a million things. But what I know about a phone is calling and receiving calls. At worst, I'm on TikTok. I don't even know that there are tutorials there. And I'm on Facebook or WhatsApp. And it's also for contacting people. Therefore, by digitization, we must teach the people what much more mm. is about this. You will not even labor telling them about this anymore mm. because they'll be digitized enough to explore more even beyond this. Mm. Now, this is where I come. Mm. From a leadership role, one, I've created the IT Forum of Parliament where I've already enlisted in two days 100 members of Parliament. 
Wow. I'll first start by educating the leaders. Then I'll ask these leaders, after digitizing them, and I'm going to take about nine months, whereby we'll have them get diplomas, but in information and computer science technology, basic software, so they can learn, you can choose either to go for software engineering, others will you choose a path of cyber security, others will choose a path of medi technology, fintech, whatever it is, graphic designing, even editing, the lightest of things that you may see, because the world is crisscrossing with technology. Every sector, whether it's in media, whatever, broadcasting, whatever it is. So, if our leaders understand, we'll legislate well for technology. Do you understand? Because we'll be now talking about the data policy. When you wear this gadget, how much data do the companies collect from you? So what regulations should we make that allow freedom of expression, that give people liberty to innovate, but also protecting their data. Mm -hmm. Probably if you wear those glasses, what are the medical side effects? Okay. Let's give people comfort, because one guy will just come up with a fake thing. So when if people are not digitized, you remember with immunization, mm -hmm. someone said one time in the 80s that you would die. At the end of the day, Uganda had 300,000 people with polio. Their PWDs up to today, because their parents, did not listen to the advice of government, mm -hmm. and they listened to a funny witch doctor somewhere okay. who thank said you, something. Thank so, you, Honorable. Ju just, just a second. Mm. So, as we. 30 seconds. All right, all right. As we talk about the digital space, and we talk about the gadgets, it goes back to the same thing. Educate the people that there is a benefit. For those of you that are doing education, mm -hmm. you can study remotely. For those of you that are in medical technology, that this technology has already been invented in Israel, <coughs> where we are going to make remote surgeries. Already they have been there, but now it's going to be part of the medical curriculum that if you do not possess it, then you can hardly work in the new medical curriculum. So, for those of you that are doing tourism, even the tourists, if you learn how do we build characters, how do we own rights? Probably there is someone now who owns the digital space rights of a wind impenetrable, impenetrable game park. Yeah, okay. So they will be the ones making money because you must show the person mm -hmm. how do I make money from that digital world? Is it just for entertainment? Yes, you can do tourism. You will be able to go and tour, let's say like the Bahamas, like I said. But equally there is someone in the US that wants to visit the gorillas in wind. Who is going to build you. that content? Uh, I'm sorry, I and have to, you know, cut I, you short because of right. uh, time. But yeah. let me let uh, uh, Mr. Mugeni here uh, supplement on that particular one. He's telling us what more future does it hold onto the developments around Uganda, public development and the entire economy. Okay, first I'd like to just hint on uh, what Mr. Ivaibi mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, the way we're going to interact with this new world built on blockchain is totally different. The way you'd see that uh, you save a music file on your flash disk, now in blockchain there's what we call a wallet. It looks like a flash disk and you store a digital file, but in this case it could be a token which can be uh, monetized as money or an NFT. Now, we, shall, we cannot cover everything in this session. This is an awareness session because if we speak about this topic it could take days. So. You would have to have a gadget or even your computer because you can store a file there. You store this file which will be an NFT. I'm trying to drive to see to show you how you will be able to, to exist in the metaverse. Mm -hmm. So once you own this NFT, maybe you bought it, maybe you signed up and it's given for you for free. Just the way you sign up for Facebook and you choose your name, your username. If your username does not exist, you have to edit it to, to be unique. So this unique username in the metaverse will be an NFT. So if I want to log into, uh, let's say the new Facebook, because Facebook owns this, uh, the company now that built this, they know the future and this is what they are building. Mm -hmm. So you own the NFT, you have your wallet where you store it. So if you want to log onto Facebook, in the Met, which is now Meta, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, Facebook is even outdated now. <laughs> so it's Meta. If you want to log into Meta, you will connect your device, maybe uh, your laptop on the internet, then you connect, instead of typing in your username and password, you simply connect your wallet 
where that NFT that represents you, your identity, exists. So for example, if you want the experiential learning, you'll wear these glasses. So that NFT will be you, the scanned version of you, for example, existing there. So if I want to speak to Rita, I don't need to have a mobile phone typing. We can exist in the space. We can say, hey, Rita, let's meet in the, in the US. The you know? Let's go sit uh, <laughs> at the Paris and we have a chat. Mm -hmm. And you actually feel that you're there. So now one realizes that these, these gadgets are very expensive. So we have a drive that we have been running for people to come here at Taiwan and experience these things physically. Come and experience the boxing match with Tyson and see how it feels because we've seen people fall down here because they actually feel they exist in this space. So with this, we have now looked at uh, the grassroots starting with universities. We are driving partnerships with the universities so that we can go there and give these kids, the youth, the experience. What is it going to transform after that? That's what I want to hear from you. Okay, I'll start with just one example. We have already deal, uh, uh, sealed a deal with one of the gaming companies. So, through gaming, we are going to demonstrate how people can benefit from Metaverse and uh, the new technologies. Mm -hmm. So, this should be confirmed at least next month. People will start signing up and come and we, build, we want to build a gaming community that is taking advantage of these new gadgets. Because if we are bringing this gadget on the market, and you have not trained people to use it, it's not going to be bought by anybody. Oh. So you have to show the person why they need to spend a thousand dollars to buy this gadget. They know that if I buy this gadget, I use it to play a video game, I'm going to make five thousand dollars a month. So this way people know it is an investment. Because the new internet is an internet where you own your data. It's not owned by anybody due to this, its nature of decentralization. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mogeni. For now, let me cross back to uh, Mr. Ivabi Festo there. If you can hear us, please do uh, share with us how can this blockchain technology uh, be effectively used without you know, collateral damages? Because I do understand, I have gotten into this Oculus before, and then I'm working, I feel like, oh, I need to go back. So how can I not be addicted to this kind of environment? Then there is a, a traumatization. I see people come here. Uh, you're expecting another moon when you get it on. And then you have an experience there. You feel like you, your reality has been, you know, touched a bit. Yeah. I mean, how can we control ourselves in that kind of manner? Um, for any... Internet-based technology privacy is a very crucial thing that they, that, that they have to inaugurate before letting it out to the public because uh, it is not, it's, it, Internet is not an exception that there is also crime, just like any other technology. So uh, you'll be in charge of who gets into your space. Uh, you can be able to, there'll be parental guidance for these technologies and many other things that are going to be able to, to protect spaces where only a limited number of people are supposed to go and, and many things like that. Um, before you take me out, I wanted to expound on uh, what uh, Honorable Seroko was talking about and the, the use of uh, the metaverse besides the gaming. Yeah. We live in very turbulent times and uh, a year ago we were in the lockdown and uh, Social, physical interaction was the casualty. We were not allowed to even hug our loved ones, hug our children, and uh, go to visit our mothers. So you realize that the only way we could interact was through uh, video calls, Google Meets, and Zooms. Well, the Metaverse promises to change this. We are able to visit our loved ones uh, digitally through our digital state, and we are able to do absolutely almost everything that a physical meeting can also have. Like, for example, if we were already on to the metaverse, I should have been there with you in, a, in my digital state, sitting in another chair with you guys discussing this issue. So it's, 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 it promises much more than just sight and sound. It gives the real experience. It's not just about gaming, but it's people are going to, we are going to be able to live, work, and play on to uh, the, the metaverse world. It's, it's different. And uh, I can give another example of uh, the country, Barbados. It has already created up an embassy onto the metaverse. So if Barbados doesn't have a met an embassy here in Uganda, you are able to pick appointments to attend the embassy meetings and interviews onto the metaverse. So it's as good as being physically there okay. in the embassy of Barbados. 
So it is a big deal. Everything else, every The next one is still yours actually. I've seen uh, like three comments there are uh, rolling through as we are streaming. Someone is confused about the NFT. Is it something that they own? Is it a collateral? I've seen a comment like that. So please highlight for us or explain for us the relationship that is there between you know crypto, NFTs, tokenization and then the metaverse in less than two minutes. Okay, thank you. Cryptocurrency so if you are living in a virtual world you cannot pay physically you cannot pay with your paper money you're going to have to pay uh, with, uh, with, with with digital money so this is digital money that is backed up by a technology that we call the blockchain then uh, uh, tokenization is literally uh, is, is literally breaking down a certain project into a token where everyone can participate into buying these particular projects so NFTs, um, a few months ago, I uh, posted something about uh, someone that took a picture of Nelson Mandela's first warranty of arrest. Uh, and uh, that picture was sold as an NFT for $130,000. And someone was, was asking me, why would someone buy a picture for that much amount of money? Well, this is how NFTs also come in into the metaverse and in in, in uh, in the blockchain. Well. Like I said about social and physical interactions, we were unable to fly from countries to another. Here, you're going to be able to put on glasses and be able to teleport to a country like South Africa and tour South Africa, go to all their tourism centers, go to their museums. And in their museums, if you're going to their digital museum in your digital avatar state, you're going to have to see things like that, that, that uh, picture of Nelson Mandela's first warranty over, over, over it. So, going into that museum you're going to you're going to have to to pay certain tokens for you to access that museum of course access is going to be through digital means a password and uh, uh, an, an authentication code or something like that so this is how people money are going to be able to monetize through nfts so if someone is going to see to view a picture of this uh first warrant of arrest of nelson mandela a picture of what a a picture of uh, the first uh, the, the, the first monument in South Africa through the digital really museum. We are going to, to be able to pay through cryptocurrencies. You know, we have got less than thirty minutes to at least tackle some issues that are hot burning. I am sorry to cut you short there, but just stay with us. Uh, Mr. Mugeni, you had something to add on that, but before that, please mm. take it. Let me cross to uh, Mr. Mlondo here. Yeah. You have interacted with numerous community coming to Nylon to put on the Oculus to explore a lot of blockchain you know, opportunities around. Please yeah. tell us how easy or challenging is it? I mean, people from different backgrounds and you are uh, maybe telling them this for the very first time. How amazing is it? Share with us your experience. Well, it's an amazing experience. That's what I can have. I, I can tell you. Mm. Dealing with people, one, who are illiterate, mm. semi-illiterate, but also even the uh, adopters, mm. people who are very fast to uh, understand the concept. So it's something that you have to persist on. Mm. Uh, you show these people that they this is food for example you're feeding a, ch a child a kid but again this kid is hungry he he or she doesn't want to show you that he's hungry so uh, it's an amazing experience and uh, we have also inter uh, interacted with a lot of people who have uh, burnt their fingers in two schemes mm -hmm. you know ponzi schemes i was sharing with someone just the earlier on today that he, there's something I've learned from Africans. Mm. We really want a quick, rich uh, scheme, yeah. uh, games. Yeah. We are gamblers in life. We want to make and I, I was telling someone, even in farming, there are people who always go for seasons just because honorable say they made some money the last season. Last season. Yeah. So they jump there without factoring in all the inputs or, or maybe the 
other effects. At the end of the day, they make losses. So the same applies to this industry. When this, inter, uh, this technology came through around 2009, 10, a lot of people saw blockchain and the Web3 via cryptocurrencies. So I am much aware that a lot of people lost money because they wanted to, to dice to make sure they, they, they put in 1,000, they get 10,000. <laughs> so uh, when people lost money because of lack of understanding of how things work, so is right now the ripple effect in the market. A lot of people are, are hesitant, uh, others are skeptical when you tell them about, no, this is technology, this is something that uh, crypto is just a small fraction of the entire ecosystem. You take them slowly by slowly, but very soon we shall get there because you cannot uh, resist with technology. Change is a fact of life. That's what uh, our experience has been with Nile One. Okay. Thank yeah. you so much, Mr. And by the way, some of them, they call and they're like, no, uh, instead of, of learning, can't you find a way how to trade for me? <laughs> multiply my money uh, you know. and then you tell them that no 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 mm. better understand this it's not all about trading i mean this is a big industry it needs more of content creators character builders developers now a lot of developers are on what we call web 2 uh, <clears throat> but so there's also web the, the statement that uh, it's very important to understand the metaverse space first before actually rolling it out. Yeah. Just like uh, yes. Honorable said, the, yeah. the important basics. For yes. now, uh, let me pause you there. Let me cross to Mr. Mogeni here. Later on, go to Honorable. Speak to us about your submission from uh, Mr. Ivory. Okay, I'll start by just making a small comment on Mr. Daniel's uh, submission. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, We've, now one is an education center to start with. We have visual and audio studios. And so we cover very many services. Like I said, we cannot cover everything in this session. So you'll see more of this coming out. I posted something today on my WhatsApp and uh, it was first we learn, then we earn. The word is learn, but when you remove the L, you earn. So one thing comes before the other. You don't start it back way. So if you don't learn, don't expect to earn. And if you do it that way, then you're going to lose a lot of money. This is why people go for Ponzi schemes, and some even do it intentionally, because they want to get quick uh, riches. Mm -hmm. Then going back to Mr. Festo's uh, comment about the NFTs, let me put a smile to the entertainment industry, the uh, content producers. Uh, an NFT is a non-fungible token. This is uh, a token that is unique, and none exists that looks like you. For example, even twins have differences. They don't have the same fingerprint, you know? Mm -hmm. So there is some identity that di identifies one thing from another. So for example, in the music industry, since an NFT can exist as an audio file, <coughs> it can exist as a picture, it can exist as a, as a video file, and so many other ways. In the music, mu a, a couple of years ago, before, of course, the internet grew and exploded, musicians used to produce music records. These were CDs or tapes, and they sold these physical records to people. So you'll be like, oh, I sold a million copies. But now with the internet and where people can just copy and paste <laughs> files, it was not, the model had to change. You could not sell a CD anymore. Because if I bought one copy uh, of the CD, I'll go and create 10 copies and distribute others. So now imagine I produce, uh, our musician produced a song. We tokenize it. This is where the tokenization comes in. We tokenize it and say, let's create 10,000 copies of this. Put it on the blockchain. Nobody else can create anything more than that. So already you know how your you plan your revenue very well. You know, 10,000 copies, we're going to sell them at this price. This is how we're going to distribute, and it's out there. So if anybody wanted a copy uh, for themselves, they had to buy from those who already own them. So you could price it at any point. So you see how all these benefits come in. The first adopters are going to be the best uh, earners out of this technology. So it gives power back to the cre content uh, creators. You can create your music direct, own those NFTs, sell them and get the money direct to you. So we are cutting out the middlemen. This is what blockchain is all about. These brokers, uh, please call NTV, call 911, take my CD there to play. No, 
you will be able to send this file direct to them and they be able to air it if you like. So okay. the benefits are really endless. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Uh, Mogeni uh, here. That's for Stone Reports report. I like the fact that you earlier on told us what you're already doing. I was even going to ask, but <laughs> <laughs> you have already arranged, yeah. you know, um, your colleagues, you're going to be teaching them. Yeah. That's yeah. a great strategy. I like the fact that you're already telling himself. 19 months, you said. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Even if you want to join, I, I, I can <laughs> see the biggest problem with Africans mm -hmm. is the fear to diversify. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm a lawyer mm -hmm. with a master's in law. Yes. I'm a journalist. Mm -hmm. wow. Therefore, your ability to switch. I've been in the US and people are being transformed mm -hmm. from people in the saloon to software engineers. Mm -hmm. Because that is what the world needs now. Mm -hmm. Now, the reality of what we are having is not a mere, and this is my frustration, mm -hmm. mere talking would not help. Uh, and just to drive my Cut point on, home, on honorable, no, no, no. As, you conc as you supplement, to drive my point home, is that people are waiting to hear from you. You are a member of parliament. I mean, there is a lot that is ongoing, blocked by regulators, blocked by no, government. I, 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 I think take will, us there. We'll, we'll talk about it oh, if we have time. Please. But uh, let's first now teach the ordinary person, whether they're in Cape Verde or in Ghana or in Nigeria, wherever they are. Okay. to understand that brothers and sisters there is nothing that comes just falls like wind mm -hmm. even wind goes through a process to arrive where you are mm -hmm. therefore for you to really really get into understanding and we are only give, trying to throw the light mm -hmm. I'll give you an example if we talk about content someone will sit there and ask themselves now what is content every terminology we introduce is new to someone. <laughs> yeah. Whatever you do and produce for consumption of the other person is referred to as content. When it's moved through the cables, it becomes data. You understand? Now, let's go back to what amazingly Kilian has said. Very many people with a lot of acumen, with a lot of knowledge, produce content on TikTok, on Facebook, or everywhere they are. Or even in school, teachers. Now, a teacher will be able to conduct tutorials that they have been conducting on different applications, including YouTube, by inviting children to class remotely or virtually. So that is why, basically, someone must first learn the basics of tech, like you say, and then come to the Web 2 and understand how to use the Web 3. But who will be the consumers? That's why I say I've started with leaders. Okay. So if I have a footprint in every constituency, when every leader can now go to every sub-county and get me minimum 100 people, mm -hmm. that will mean I will train inadvertently 1,000 people per constituency. If I train 1,000, I'll have 100,000 in one year or two years. Then after that, the ripple effect will be to a million. Mm -hmm. How does that make it beneficial? The importer of this will have many importing. Yeah. The mm -hmm. maker of this will have many making. Mm -hmm. But probably also will not only be consumers, we will mm -hmm. now have industrial innovators of these virtual reality glasses. Therefore, that's why I say it starts by the basic digitization. Because assuming this tool came and it broke down, who can fix it? Who knows the motherboard and the sensors attached to this tool? Who can fix it? So we must mix this virtual reality technology with the basic computer skills of engineering and industrial design. Probably you might find this is the game changer for Africa because we have the time, we have the young people, we have the cheap labor. Imagine the producers of these now knowing that we have probably young people that are, are digital aware, they know the use of this, they'll bring their factories here. Mm -hmm. The ripple factor of creation of jobs will be more. Mm -hmm. The more people will join gaming, tourism, um, I, I want to talk about sports. Medical. Sports. sports. Mm -hmm. Do you know how much of the League of Uganda 
People might not have the time to physically go and watch it. But if I put on glasses, virtual reality glasses, and I have the rights to transmit the Football League of Uganda, I'll go and support my Express of Villa. And you go to Nambola. And go to Nambola and watch Uganda Crane. Yeah. Probably the ticket will be more expensive for those that are physically there. Mm. But then secondary sales of this content shall be in virtual reality transmission. Mm. The same will happen to the Premier League. And what does it guarantee? That I watch at real time, I have a feeling that I'm in the same place, just like the other, but we can multiple watch. You're there watching your movie, Madame is watching the movie, the son is playing games with this virtual reality feeling, and, and for me I'm watching football. So everyone is jumping, as they score here I jump, the other one jumps, and this one jumps. So, advantages, real time dynamic, multiplicity. You understand? Mm -hmm. Before even we go to the other ripple effects of creation of content. And I, I, I thank uh, Mr. Festo. Well, Festo. Yeah. When Festo is trying to break it down mm -hmm. for someone to understand what is that non-fungible token? Mm -hmm. Is it a physical token? Mm -hmm. Does someone call it a token? No, the language was from value. Because whatever was attached with value was either currency or a token, or a mineral. That's why they tell you, they mine crypto. And you say, where do they mine it? Do they <laughs> carry dagger? Yeah. That's why people have a bias. Yes. Because when a society doesn't know, then definitely, if it's derailed by one single person, mm -hmm. it attracts bias. Mm -hmm. Now, it takes you a lot to re-advertise and transform people. Yeah. Okay. Therefore, you're telling me about regulators. Do you want me to touch that? I know many people who Me. don't understand digital assets. And that's why I want to talk about mindset mm. from the leaders. They don't know. Mm. You understand? They <laughs> associate it with the like, Ponzi scheme. What are you really doing about it? Oh, well, 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 well. Of course, I'm not going to do everything alone and in one day. <laughs> I start by sensitizing mm. people mm. so that they understand. Mm. Yeah. And uh, that is the journey I've started. Mm. So when they understand digitization, they understand digital assets they will not be resentful to what you're saying. Then rush the notion that everything must come from outside, in Africa. When you dress up a person in the face of a European or a white man, whatever they say is acceptable. Why? Because we've gotten that inferiority complex from colonialism that we cannot innovate, we cannot start, we cannot move. That is why when investors are brought to African leaders, even if they are empty-headed, even if they have nothing in the form of content, there is acceptability. Why? Because they have already built what we call social capital. Okay. They come with social capital. That's why there was a time when you would bring any Arab here and get anything. Why? Because Arabization was seen to be commensurate with the petrodollar. <laughs> so when you would say, investor coming from the Gulf wants to, they, you know, all Africans lay their backs and you walk on them and they give you everything. The same thing that happened us during the sad times of slavery. This is what, because our leaders, having not believed in themselves, that they could fight back, that okay. they would innovate, they gave in quickly. That is why I encourage my friends and my brothers that we've started the journey in a very good uh, situation, in a very good place. Africa has a very many young people, many young people in gaming, they're in education, they're in uh, agriculture, wherever it is. We want to give them the comfort that in this space where we are, we are coming, do not be in a hurry, mm -hmm. do not rush. First digitize yourself and you'll be a great consumer and use of this content. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much, uh, uh, Honorable Sereko, that is a uh, member of parliament for Kampala Central. Let's cross back to uh, Ivory Festo online there. If you can hear us, please share with us where you picture the demand and capacity of the metaverse technology moving forward. What do you have to say about <coughs> that? Please submit it within two minutes. Metaverse is a lot. As we speak, the big tech giants are on the race to claim the metaverse. Tech giants like Apple, Microsoft, Google, and uh, Facebook, they are on the race to claim the metaverse. Recently, we know uh, that Facebook changed its name from Facebook to Meta. 
is, it was just to stay on the curb. There are many companies that are building their own different metaverses. So most, there, 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 there are several metaverses that are being built actually in the thousands, but the, the notable ones are for these uh, biggest ones. And um, uh, when you look at the gaming industry, uh, the biggest gaming, the, the biggest gaming companies like Roblox, uh, Grand Theft Auto, and Fortunate have also, have also already created up their own metaverses with their own different economies, storylines, and characters. And uh, the, the demand for these games is uh, is quite immense. So. For people like me that invest in technology, we always follow where the big money goes, where the big technological giants also go. And it's not only technological giants, also the governments are betting on it. Like uh, last year in 2021, the government of South Korea created up the National Metaverse Alliance so that they can be able to regulate the different metaverses. And uh, uh, in the US, the city of Santa Monica has already been built onto the metaverse. Uh, and what are they using this city to do? It's they're using it as a pilot study. As people come in to be to play games onto this city, the coders, the people that are building this city digitally, are learning how to improve on the teleportation of the different people into the different parts of the city. So literally, they have hidden various treasures in different parts of the city so that gamers can come and uh, look for those treasures as they earn tokens. In so doing, the coders behind uh, the, the construction of these digital cities can know the mistakes and uh, the shortfalls and where to improve in uh, creating digital life or metaverse life a reality. So as you can see, it, the big tech giants have gone to that side. The governments are also going to that side. And uh, usually, uh, technologies are driven by the young generation. So if the young generation also goes, that means every person out there is also going to follow. Just like I explained in my submission before, the government also of Barbados has also created a sovereign uh, mission, a diplomatic mission onto the metaverse. So there are different uses and uh, of the metaverse and so many, so many uh, aspects. I mean, so many parastatals, so many governments, so many non-government organizations are also building onto this, uh, this technology. So the demand is great. Uh, the, the technology is already there. In my conclusion, I would say uh, everything out there is becoming the metaverse. So resisting it or living in denial of it is a bad idea. And asking questions of how it works and how uh, to live onto the metaverse would be a good one. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Aivari. Um, I'll give a chance to Kian here to add something briefly within a minute, then we'll cross to Mr. Mlami. Yeah, so me, to me, I know that uh, the demand of this technology will be built out. We are at a very <coughs> early stage. Anybody that is aware about blockchain metaverse right now, just know that you are an early adopter. Compare yourself to somebody in the year 2000, where the email, nobody even knew what they what, what can I use the email for? But yeah. today, Nine. it's everything for you, you know? If you don't have an email and you buy a, a smartphone, you will not be able to use it without first adding your email account. So look at it this way. I would like to speak a little technical, but try to break it down for the lay person to understand. Yeah. When we have what we call layer one, when you're programming, we have, a, a, for the programmers know, <laughs> the C language. I mean, if you look at the screen and look at the C, you don't know how to, what, what, what is even shown there. But to make it easy for another, the next level, we have what we have, the, we call the graphic user interface. This is what you see, for example, you have uh, Windows, you have, uh, we have three application, uh, sorry, uh, operating systems. You have Windows, you have uh, Android, and you have the iOS. So in the future, let's look at this, uh, the first meta, uh, the competition between the big tech giants is there because now if you look at this Oculus, the company was, called Oculus at the start, it was acquired by Facebook. The next move Facebook did is change its name from Facebook to Meta. So now they are really going blockchain. Now they are, they are, they are in a competition to produce the next uh, winning operating system. So Microsoft is on board, Samsung is on board, Apple is on board, the competition is on. Don't expect for us to have one Metaverse. Just like we have Earth, we have Mars, we have Jupiter, there will be different worlds. Okay. You will be able to choose which benefits you the most, what can you get from which. So I believe that uh, with that, let's take one step at a time. Nile One saw this from the beginning. We know that education 
Learning is the basis. If we don't train the people, nobody's going to sell anything here if people don't know how to use it. So that is the beginning, and that is what we're trying to push here by going to the universities. Honorable Seiko has a project that he's pushing, has been running for a couple of years, that is skilling people in innovative technology, programming, graphics, all these things are going to help people to come on board. So for us who already have partnerships, for example, with the gaming industry, now one has a role to train the people that are going to play the games. So we provide the facilities, people come here, you sign up, then we teach you. You don't have to be a pro at doing anything. We okay. teach you, we know what level you're at, mm. and we put you on a program until you reach where we need you to be. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mugeni. We're concluding in just less than four minutes, gentlemen, and everyone watching us across anywhere you are. Mr. Mnoto, mm. this show we have <coughs> someone is eager to know this gadget right here. I believe I have seen people come in here putting it on the head, the oculus. How do you, I mean, maintain the uh, number one, the hygiene and then privacy okay. of this gadget? being used or how some how can someone actually maintain that as they consider it in use okay uh thank you so much rita mm. well there are so many questions that people were asking whether where can, can they get it from uh, where can they buy it from mm. well you can order this uh, via oculus quest company mm. uh, you talk to them and then you 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 pay all the fees to ship it here that's number one if you can manage it but again to our people in uh, africa we are by the not the only players in the market mm. there are so many companies that we work with here microsoft microsoft is led by uh, evive festo then there is digital assets traders association of uganda there are so many young traders who have come together now in the digital assets we appreciate that. where honorable Monserica has offered himself also to go to the parliament with them to table yes to table all the bills about these digital assets and then we have people from tanzania bcv uh, in kenya binance is here there are so many cellular labs yellow card africa chamber of digital, africa chamber of digital commerce actually best of Nodo is uh, uploading all of you right now yeah yeah, yeah. i'm applauding okay. all of you because these are all stakeholders okay Please uh, make sure that you find wherever they are. We wire Africa. Uh, go there and get some information. Uh, BAU, that is Blockchain Association of Uganda, headed by Mr. Kwame Rugunda, uh, and also Crypto Savannah, where Noah is. Uh, we, we commend all these people, stakeholders, okay, into, into this. And uh, the hygiene of this, yes, one and, the with and the privacy, we sanitize these things every day every day and yes. after use that is number one to make sure that people don't contaminate i mean they don't they don't get issues mm -hmm. with their whatever mm -hmm. hygiene or health then secondly uh on the privacy mm -hmm. what you see here there are some application softwares mm -hmm. uh, which are owned by our company nile one mm -hmm. we subscribe to them we purchase them and then we allow users to use the front end of them. They, they are not, the the, they, yes, just the experience as of now, because our strategy is simple. One, we want people to learn. Mm -hmm. Number two, they assess. Mm -hmm. Number three, we help them to create, mm -hmm. because going forward, in the, 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 the opportunities just, it has just started, we are on, on the first layer of this, okay. we need more people uh, who can create content. Eh? People who are always going, people who always go to their social medias to post on their TikTok. Okay. Right now, that's what we we'll call a content. Thirty seconds, Mr. Right now, they can create that same content and then they earn on it. Okay. Do you know that people go to Mr. Google every time they go there, ask Mr. Google, Uncle Google, to, uh, to answer you this, but. Now, there are browsers mm. that they can use, and every time they use, they earn some money. Okay. Like Brave Browser. There are even other platforms that we normally use to uh, Zoom or to Meet, and every okay. time they use... I'm sorry 
to cut there is money there, Mr. yes Donald. at least you have told us how we can really get privacy and uh, you know hygiene. hygiene of this thank you so much mm. even for giving thanks to the partners yeah we're concluding this discussion i'm giving gentlemen a chance but for this time uh, we have a people's representative within us mm. i'm giving you a chance to ask to pose a question to any of the gentlemen for clarity for public to understand yeah. any question um, I don't think I have a question for them to clarify. Okay, I then please submit we, we, for us your conclusion done, uh, remarks. The work. Okay, I would like to commend every one of you that has been here. It's not going to be a simple journey. Mm. Um, none of these people should tell you it's just a simple walking. Yeah. Um, I discourage that language. But I can tell you it is a very lucrative yeah, area yeah. when you understand it fully. Please be part of the family. We don't need to be millions in the beginning. Yeah. For all of you that are there, become the vicegerents of the cause. Become the messengers. Keep asking where you don't understand. Be part of the fellowship of the platform. Be part of this future when you still now have the chance to. Let's strike the iron when it's still hot. Mm. The opportunities are for the early bird that will catch the worm. Oh. I can tell you whether you're in sports, or you're in tourism, or you're in uh, medicine, or in education, wherever you are, you're going to interface with the world of technology, or even designing. So probably you'll sit here, and so you're ordering things in China, like a business person, and you'll have the exact feel of touring the factory, and even feeling the fabric remotely. So what am I trying to tell you, is that there is a little much more that you ought to understand that what we are talking about is cross-cutting. Mm. You'll have a feel of it in business, in education, in tra travel or tourism, in every single engagement, from medical to day-to-day -day life. May thank the good Lord so bless you and thank you for having hosted me. Yeah. And we pray that so we have much There's a question for you actually. Engagement. I don't know whether it's even a question. It's from uh, Edmond Kayondo from mm. uh, a comment on YouTube who was uh, asking or inquiring and is requesting to go uh, table this to parliament to actually have internet costs reduced so that uh, yeah. these devices and this kind of technology can go on easily and cheaper for <coughs> to you know consider i don't know what i, I think, think uh, uh, the on thursday we had uh, a, a full motion and report Mm -hmm. uh, from connectivity and costs of internet in Parliament. Only that our people, most of our people don't follow mm -hmm. what goes in Parliament. The chairperson of the Committee on ICT, Engineer Moses Magogo, presented this and the desire to hasten up connectivity and reduce the cost. But let me tell you, let me try to now educate the people yeah. <laughs> why internet is expensive. All right? The cost of internet is from the lack of user and connectivity. Okay. All right? For as long as we are less users on the infrastructure, the cost will be high. So imagine someone moving, of course, you factor in even the taxes and other things. But now, imagine moving data cables, the optic fiber, from here to Karamoja. Do you know the cost of moving it and maintaining it? And it's only used by 50 people. So you've moved it, kilometers and kilometers across districts, putting it on the backbone for only to have 10 users. You'll have engineers to service it. You'll have everything associated to the cost. Now, the burden of servicing areas that are far to reach, that don't use internet, but are connected, is shifted onto you. You understand? Mm -hmm. So the few users bear the cost of those that do not actually use it. Because Uganda has a given spectrum. We are on 300 mHz, megahertz. Okay? So when you bring me back to tell you what factors in for the cost of internet, the only tool we are left with is taxation. But the other tool we are left with is digitization. If we have many people using the internet to the extent of about 10, 15 million, the cost will definitely slash itself down and they'll even be able to use it positively to pay. But at the moment, like you said, we have one of the most expensive bundles. Reason, partly taxation. Secondly, the user. But we have to talk about in the entire region, Thank in you. East Africa. Mm -hmm. 
Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, etc. Uganda has the highest tariffs for bundles and there is a desire to bring it down and to even go to 5G because the internet connection that we have, you might not use this machine on ordinary internet. Thank True you. or false? Absolutely. Thank you, Honorable, for your submission. Right now, let's cross online to Ivadi Festo. Are you there? Could you please give us your take home from this discussion, your advice to the world as they look forward to using and exploring Metaverse? My take home is for people to position themselves well and as this technology is, uh, is uh, made ready for mainstream adoption as it's still in its development stages. People should be able to uh, position themselves for profits. They, should, they, need to, they need to identify areas where they can, uh, areas where they can invest or they can be able to, to, to be part of the product development so that they can, uh, they can grow with this, uh, with this technology and make money out of it. Us as uh, Microsoft, we have uh, cited certain projects and uh, some of these projects are, 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 are such that they are responsible for making the metaverse become bigger and more usable into the, the public. So investing in tokens of such projects is helpful. Uh, it might not be able to pay you immediately, but it's going to be, you're going to be able to uh, make a good number of money in time. Usually, uh, many people blame Africans for not investing for the future or not, not investing in things that will give you money in four or five years. But I think right now, tables are turned. Uh, many, I've seen many people doing that in uh, Uganda, and uh, uh, it's my advice that we could do more of that. So we just need to position ourselves in projects that are making the metaverse a reality. And also for those people that uh, do software development and coding, they just need to start developing uh, metaverse spaces onto these, uh, these projects, learn how to sell, sell NFTs. If you cannot do any of those things, go into the gaming world. You can play to earn, like uh, Mr. Killian has uh, been stressing. You can play to earn and uh, earn these cryptocurrencies and you can be able to cash out. Um, and uh, for the government, I think they need to look at it with a very keen eye because this is where the world is going. Uh, like I mentioned, <coughs> Social, so our physical social interactions are going to be less and everything is going to be more of digital in the future. Um, to spell it out, uh, to spell it out and break it down further for you is that uh, uh, many things, many websites are going to be replaced by digital spaces. For example, if you are supposed to, example, uh, attend uh, a sitting in parliament. In, or, uh, let's instead of going it, to, please, Mr. Ivari, thank you. Okay. I think I have lost you, unfortunately. I am not okay with that, losing you at the end. But moving further, let us have, um, within less than a minute, your conclusion and his conclusion. Mr. Mugin. Okay, I would like to start by taking the blame of the government as far as internet costs <laughs> are concerned because you cannot dictate what MTN or Airtel charges for its uh, services. As a telecom engineer, I can assure you, setting up a telecom infrastructure is one of the most expensive ventures out there. On top of that, buying Spectrum is even worse. So there's a project we're working on with the Africa Team of Digital Commerce to tokenize the internet and, uh, sorry, the telecom spectrum, whereby if it's tokenized, we would have things like crowdfunding such that we make it cheaper for the companies that are setting up the TV stations, the radio stations, the uh, telecom companies to get this uh, token, to, uh, sorry, to get the <coughs> spectrums at uh, cheaper costs. For the fact of the, the issue of infrastructure, we have to change the infrastructure, otherwise the running costs don't change. For example, the current infrastructure relies on generators and the, uh, electricity. If the price of, uh, fuel, of diesel is going up, what do you think is going to happen to you the cost of your internet it's going to go up because this company's costs have gone up so anyway we have to go back to the ground we know that we have to start somewhere first we educate our people we put the infrastructure that's needed uh, to facilitate these things like 5g 
because you're not going to uh, attend a conference seated here and it's in America yeah. and you're using 3G. Mm -hmm. The app will not even work. Mm -hmm. So if we have that in place, That's true. then we have mm -hmm. partnership between the private and uh, public sector mm -hmm. to formulate uh, ways of working together <coughs> because of course the government, first of all, why they don't like much of uh, this decentralized <laughs> technology is because of the, right. the, mm -hmm. the, the control. The, exactly, control. If they can't control it, they're not going to let it out there. It's for good, for sure. So there's, there needs to be some form of control, okay? So it should not be that they're taking away your rights or anything like that, no. We need to know certain things because many act, act factors, uh, many sorry actors out there misuse this tech to abuse uh, young kids by exposing them to uh, wrong information, you know, violence and so many other things. So all in all, uh, our platform at Nile One, first of all, is way different from what we, uh, the mainstream media. We are open, we welcome people that are innovators, content creators. I mean, come to Nile One and try to explore your, your talent. Try, uh, we have the innovation bit of it where we can incubate projects. Yep. We help you find uh, funders for these projects and so many other things like the experiential learning we have for the metaverse that many have missed out on, do not miss the opportunity, it's still mm -hmm. ongoing. Mm -hmm. We are coming to the universities with this project, so please come and participate here. I'm seeing a lot of questions uh, on YouTube. Uh, Mr. Sylvester uh, commented that we need more of this, and indeed, this is the first of many to come. Yeah. Thank you all for uh, taking your time to watch and listen in. I hope we we'll say a word or two. But expect more coming from Thank us. you so Thank much. You. Thank you so much. I am reading actually your comments. Some of you saying, uh, complaining how I'm giving uh, Mr. Ibabi a little time. Unfortunately, I lost his audio. But for more, you can go back to the link and surely re-watch it. You will get the information right there that you missed. Mr. Mlondo, within 30 seconds, conclude. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. Uh, first and foremost for uh, hosting us. Thank you into this uh, conversation, a platform, and also to thank the Honorable making time for this. Uh, number three for my comrade uh, Festo and my brother here, Kilian, for coming through. But uh, my take home or my words to our audience, number one, before they go back to their different communities, number one, are you ready for the metaverse? That's a question that you have to organize and understand. Number two, uh, to the government, please take our message there, that let them quicken the processes of uh, regulating this industry or setting up committees. Like in the first world countries and also other countries, they've already emb embraced it. El Salvador is on top of this game. Uh, I was just here in Dubai and they have set up now one million coder platform program where they invite all coders they have understood that this is something that they have to position themselves and they are giving one million people a chance to code into the metaverse and also the infrastructure of web3 so if they set up infrastructure for us set up special economic zones where entrepreneurs or innovators can go there freely to express their ideas. I'm telling you here in Uganda, we have brilliant ideas. Okay. We have brilliant young men. I've, I interact with all, most of them, but these are brilliant guys. They just lack mentorship. They lack an environment where they can express themselves. Mm -hmm. And then going forward, you're going to see a lot of things coming through. Internet in the future is going to be almost a house, a household, whatever, so because be be seconds, as, as I wind up, <laughs> okay. Elon Musk has already entered into this with, okay. through a company called Starlink, and they are providing what we call satellite internet, 5G program, whereby now the cost of uh, transmitting data through fiber, it's going to be now the end of the story, mm -hmm. because of now the fiber, I mean satellite, some of us, we are accessing this internet on the trial version. Mm -hmm. Every time they notify you that the satellite is going to pass in your area yes, this time around. As I wind up, please, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Go back and innovate. Go back and become creators. Have a strategy. 
what do you want to achieve in the next three to five years to come into this? Do you want to remain on the same level or advance your level? Seek knowledge from the people. Right now we have internet of things where you can go on Google and read more about this. We have set up platforms. Very soon we shall have a very big conversion here in Uganda where we, we're going to register 5,000 people from, from different countries. They are converging here for this technology. We're okay, going to put everyone. More and uh, us about that I, I as I wind up, finally, <laughs> 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 I please beseech uh, our leaders today into okay. this discussion to come more for these forums and we record more sessions for the people because they really want to really understand. Okay. Next time we can maybe tackle on, on the, on the digitization alone. Thank you, Mr. Mlondo. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen, for uh, having the time yes. here. It's been an amazing one. We're going to sanitize after yeah. here. <laughs> okay, please. Ladies and gentlemen watching across everywhere, it's been the positioning yourself into the metaverse economy and making sure you explore the amaz amazing opportunities there. Do not forget to hit onto the notification bell so that it rings. You get more information from here and also sharing this link. My name is Rita Cabanero from now on. Bye for now. Okay.